Good afternoon, it's Dr. Earl Smith again. Uh, thanks to my technical friends who are going to edit these videos and paste the pieces together. Um, I'm going to show you the use of cold laser. This is a commercially available device. Any rehabilitation medicine, physiotherapy, physical therapy gym could have a cold laser for use on a joint, for reduction of pain and inflammation in, in, in a tendon, and, and tendonitis, tendinosis, anesthesiopathies. It's the same technique that we will be using today on the lung. Time is of the essence, and in the absence of any proper protocols, I'm going to put my cold laser on high power so that I can treat the lung area faster. Um, because it's high power, I'm only going to do five minutes. This has the potential to be inserted into a plastic bag, treat one patient, throw away the plastic bag, move on to the next patient because the infrared can travel through, through the polyethylene bag. So I have my timer set for five minutes. I have high power. I'm now going to turn on the laser Take with this device, which is the Sino-Rico made in China device. You just have to adjust the power to high, timer set for five, and then turn on. You can see there's a red beam. The instructions are don't look at the red beam. This is in the visible, but the cold laser is infrared radiation 650, 804, 808 nanometers. And you just put over the area that is painful. COVID ARDS is described as lung bases. And so the patients with mild to moderate COVID ARDS, the survivors will tell you that this is where the pain was. And this is about how fast you sweep the radiation, the infrared beam, penetrating in a collimated, that is to say parallel beams of light, not rays which are spreading out in different directions like, like a, a lamp, a collimated beam to penetrate into the soft tissues. So I'm just going back and forth from the left and then to the right, and then with the device flat on the skin, and imparting energy into the lung parenchyma. The beauty of the collimated beam is that the light is not scattered. I'm not sending uh, rays of light in every direction into the liver or surrounding organs like the gallbladder. I'm just going around and I'm doing the lung bases. So I'm very mobile, so I can actually reach my own lung bases most people, of course, won't be able to do this. Now, this should be easy to do for ICU patients because for their ARDS, they're already placed in the prone position. So this is about how fast I'm moving it, a centimeter every second or so. And that's all that's because there's no protocols for this. And in the absence of any protocol, I just adapted what the physiotherapists do in the physiotherapy gym when they're treating an ankle sprain. So I just go back and forth like this. And if the patient is able to talk, they might be able to tell you, this is where my lungs are hurting me. And some of them will tell you more apex, and some of them will tell you more paris parasternal. And the technique is pretty amazing in that the lung pain stops almost immediately. And that is consistent with what the literature reports have said that x-rays improve within a matter of hours. And so on the back, the lungs are pretty close to the rib cage. It should be easy to get into the lung parenchyma. There I'm starting to get into the more of the pulmonary, the pulmonary tree. And one can go from above. I'm not bothering to scan over the scapula because I don't think the energy will penetrate the scapula. I may be wrong. Um, so I'm going down the uh, medial sternal border, a uh, medial scapular border as well, down to the lung bases. Uh, I'm very hypermobile, so I can reach this far. Most people can't. And again, you see I'm not very systematic about it. I just try and cover everywhere. 
and I'm going to come, if a patient were to tell me, oh, it hurts more here or there, then I would go to where the pain is more. And then I'm in the mid axillary line now. So now I can go up and the lungs are fairly superficial there. I can probably guide my treatment based on what the x-ray shows me for patients who are unable to talk. We have not yet trialed this in ICU. It's just a good thought to try something that's not going to affect the patient's fluid status, blood pressure, not going to involve injections, nebulized medications into the lungs, raising the risk of scattering COVID into the room air. This is just something that's easy to do. And I'm gonna go up and show you how I would treat the lung apices, the apex of the lung. Typically with COVID patients, it's the bases. So my timer says I have 30 seconds left. And you can see that high power, five minutes, and the oxygenation will rise right away. If you don't wanna try this on a COVID patient, Look around for an asthmatic or a COPD or who's running at O2 sat of 94% and do this once on them. A few hours later, their O2 sat will be at 99, 98%. So this is just about the pace at which I'm moving. Again, to refresh, concentrate on the basis. But if the patient has pain elsewhere or maybe you have findings on the x-ray, you could direct some of the infrared. This is near infrared radiation, add some energy to them that way. And you can see my five minutes has elapsed. The beam has stopped. Don't look directly at the beam. You can buy these devices online. I got mine on Amazon for $170. They have more expensive devices. You might be able to find one in your hospital's physical therapy gym. Thank you for your attention.